Welcome to my channel. My name is Ria and today I'm going to take you through the astrology for this week. So let's get started and we begin this week with Monday, right? And we have Mars here in a positive aspect with Saturn on Monday. And Mars is the planet of action, of taking initiative. It's the planet of making things happen, right? It's the planet that says, I want this, I'm going to go get it. And it's making a positive aspect with the planet of structure, right? The planet of decisions, the planet of streamlining things, Saturn. Saturn can also bring limitations and restrictions, yes, but it can also really help us streamline and decide and commit to something. So a positive aspect between these two on Monday tells me that this is an energy where we can take action in a very structured way, right? If we want something, we can make it happen in a very organized, planned manner. We can finally commit Saturn to taking a certain action, right? All these are the positive manifestations of this energy. So this energy is something that can help us structure, streamline, taking action right moving forward so that's this energy and we have this with us on monday and that is important right now because if you look at the chart right there's a lot of aries and i speak about this in almost every video because it is important right we have had jupiter in aries since 10th may mars in aries since may 24th and whenever Jupiter enters the sign of Aries, which is every 12 years or so, right, we begin a new 12-year cycle. So we are starting that. We are starting that with Jupiter and Aries. And up until June 3rd, right, Mercury was retrograde. And what that means is that although from May, May 10th especially, we had this abundance of this go-getting energy, this energy to start a new 12-year cycle. With Mercury retrograde, we were held back. And even the eclipses that have happened, right? We had an eclipse on May 15th or 16th, depending on your location, right? And that eclipse was about closing out the past. That eclipse was about letting go. And I speak about this in every video as well because it's important. So around then, we started to let go of something. We started to close out old things, right? Lunar eclipse on the south node in the sign of Scorpio, a major ending point, a major closing out point, a major transformation point, right? And that eclipse was in a squared Saturn, which means from that eclipse, we were asked to release something, let go of something, end something. And at the same time, we were asked a decision. We were asked to restructure things. But on that eclipse, Mars and Neptune were conjunct, confusing us a little bit, right? Is this the way forward? Is this the way forward? I can't really see clearly. That was the energy. And since then, that confusion has been with us. So although we've had this abundance of Aries with Jupiter there, with Mars there, to take action, to make things happen, our energies right now and for the past month or so especially have been focused a lot on closing out the past and there has been some confusion on which path to take, how to go about things, how to structure things in our lives, right? So why I bring this up is because Mars in Aries, right, is sextiling Saturn, perhaps helping us, you know, with that confusion a little bit helping us finally commit Saturn to taking action in a certain way helping us take action for the long run Saturn Saturn is for the long run so this is that point where the work that we have been doing in a way right closing out the past trying to restructure things in our lives trying to reorganize a certain part of our lives but that has been very confusing right now is the point where with this aspect we can say okay you know what i have been wondering what's the best way this way or that way and even in vedic astrology right that lunar eclipse was in the nakshatra of vishaka now nakshatras are smaller divisions of a sign and vishaka represents this split in the road right this fork in the road so even within vedic it was this um 
turning point, right? The split in the road, where the road split, but we really didn't know. This way, that way, is this the best way? Is this the best way? But now I feel with Mars, Saturn, we'll be able to say, you know what? I'm able to commit a little bit more to this way of doing things. I'm getting a little bit more structured in what to do. So this happens on Monday. And that's that's the first thing. That's the first thing. Now, on Monday, we also have the moon in Gemini, right? And the moon has been here since Pacific time, Saturday evening, I believe. Could be Sunday morning as well, but Saturday into Sunday. And Gemini is a very playful energy, right? It's an energy that loves to communicate. It's an energy that loves to learn new things. It's an energy that likes to be on the go, right? And that makes Gemini a very stimulating sort of energy. And if you look at the chart right now, Mercury is there and Mercury rules Gemini. Venus is there. And this week on Monday, the moon is there right which means when it comes to venus or when it comes to um, our relationships our projects our um, values our appearances right venus in gemini is about making all these things exciting right making the relationship exciting making the appearance exciting it's about um you know maybe wanting to do multiple projects it's it's maybe wanting to communicate a lot with your partner so venus in gemini brings this excitement this abundance of energy to our um, relationships projects self worth value skills appearances right and that's there and has been there since last week so we have that and mercury here right mercury rules gemini mercury is our logical mind and in gemini our logic is very strong so right now our logic is very strong but again mercury in gemini is a lot about communicating a lot talking a lot reading a lot writing a lot a lot of stimulating energy and with the moon there on monday this is magnified this gemini energy so there will be this feeling maybe of you know wanting to do a bunch of things wanting to communicate wanting to do fun things so i just thought i'd mention that and gemini energy can be very stimulating so if you're feeling very stimulated right like i have this to do i have that to do i want to try this also i want to go here also i want to talk about this then maybe taking time out and going within a little bit might help so that's Monday in a nutshell, right? The highlight for Monday is this Saturn Mars sextile, which according to me can really help us take action in more of a structured way, commit to a way of moving forward and doing things. So that's Monday. Now, Tuesday is a big day because we have two important events. Now, Pacific time, the new moon is happening on tuesday some parts of the world this can be wednesday as well now we have a new moon in the sign of cancer on tuesday right or wednesday depending on your location that's the new moon a new moon is when the sun and the moon conjunct right they meet up that's a new moon and now it's happening in the sign of cancer and new moons bring with them new energy right it's the seeding point of an energy it's the beginning point of an energy that we work on for the next lunar month for the next 28 days or so so that's what a new moon is and in the sign of cancer let's talk about the themes that are highlighted right cancer is first of all a very intuitive energy right it's a very psychic energy so working with our intuition is highlighted on this new moon secondly cancer is associated with finding our comfort right it's all about what makes us feel comfortable what makes us feel secure what makes us feel like we are at home right it's that it's about our deep emotions cancer so these themes generally speaking will be highlighted right we need to work from a place of finding our comfort what is it that makes us comfortable right because sometimes we do things that might not make us very comfortable but this energy is about what's your comfort right what are you okay with what are you comfortable with are, are these things in alignment with your emotions or is this stressing you out you know it's that and cancer is an energy that's very 
home oriented right family oriented so those themes might come up as well but more importantly right and if you know your chart look for seven degrees of cancer that is where this new energy will come in for example if seven degrees of cancer is say your seventh house right the new energy will come into your business partnerships your marriage your legal relationships legal issues perhaps if it's your 10th house right then new energy is going to come into your career your business things like that so that's what is more important but generally speaking working from a place of comfort is important and cancer is also a cardinal sign right along with aries along with libra the <clears throat> sorry and along with Capricorn, these are cardinal signs and cardinal signs start things, right? They have this tremendous energy to take something and start it. So with a new moon in Cancer, right, we must start things. We must start things and there's so much Aries. See, right, Aries, um, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn, these are the cardinal signs points cardinal signs so there's a lot of energy about start starting something so in cancer with the new moon year it can be that we start something brand new right we maybe had this idea for the past month month and a half or so we've been a little confused about it right with all the energies that have been going on and the full moon in sag 14 days ago with the square to neptune more confusion so with all the confusion that's going on, maybe finally with Mars sextiling Saturn on Monday and Neptune going retrograde, the confusion might be easing off by now and we might really have that say, okay, you know what, I commit to this thing and I'm going to start it. I'm going to start it now. So Cancer is also an energy that starts things. So that's important. That's what we have. And, you know, let's talk about the cardinal signs for a moment. Aries here starts things impulsively right it's like i want this i'm gonna go get it no thinking i'm not saying if you're aries you're this i have an aries moon i'm just saying that um this is the aries energy in one manifestation we all have aries somewhere in our charts right which means we have aries somewhere so aries starts things impulsively cancer starts things i believe more intuitively right more in tune with what's comfort what's my comfort libra starts things by a lot of deliberation this way that way pros cons okay this is a better way let's start it now capricorn starts things with a plan a long-term vision right this is where i need to go 10 years from now and for that i need to start this now so we have this new moon in cancer now and i'm not saying if you're these signs you do this i'm just saying this is the energy and we all have aries cancer libra capricorn somewhere in our charts right so with cancer there's a lot of abundance to start things right but i feel we have to be comfortable with whatever we are starting i feel we have to have an intuitive element along with the logic logic is strong mercury and gemini along with the logic to help us navigate this energy and now i'm going to talk about the aspects and i do do a new moon horoscope as well on my channel so if you're interested you can watch that generally um i do mention most of the things in the weekly for the new moon but if i've missed out on something in the weekly then the new moon usually covers a little more detail. So you can check that out. It should be on my channel. So now let's talk about the aspects that are going on, right? The mo new moon here, the exact aspect is a square to Jupiter. It's almost exact, right? Very, very close, both at seven degrees. And Jupiter in astrology is a magnifier, right? It magnifies the energy. And Jupiter is also the planet of lessons. It's the planet of blessings and rewards and healing. So what this tell me, tells me is that this new moon energy is very magnified, right? Because it's in contact with Jupiter, really expanding that new energy to help us start things, help us start things from an intuitive place. It's really, really magnified. And this energy, this new moon can also help us learn things, right? It can bring with it some lessons. It can also be 
something positive, right? Because Jupiter, even in a stressful aspect such as a square, does not um, generally bring negative things. So it can lead to something positive. But since it's a square, a 90 degree angle, which is considered challenging in astrology, right? The challenge we might face is that we need that we might not feel hopeful we might not feel very optimistic i'm saying might because this is one manifestation and if that's the case with jupiter keeping that hope alive keeping that optimism alive is a good thing so i would say that's the challenge right keeping that keeping that hope keeping that optimism that yeah okay if i start this it will go well so that's important and that is the most important aspect and let's talk about what else is going on on the new moon. And I did tell you guys that Saturn here is sextiling Mars, right? And this happens exact on Monday. But on the new moon, this aspect is there. Which means that we have this abundance of energy to start something. And we have this energy to commit to it as well, right? We have this energy to commit to this way of doing things. This way of taking action. Maybe you say, you know what? I think I know what I need to start. I think I know how to restructure my life. I think I figured it out. And then Mars sat and says, okay, you know what? This is the plan and I'm committing to this plan. So it's something like that. And this happens on Friday. So I will speak about this. Mars here is going to square Pluto, but we'll feel this. We'll feel this on the new moon as well. And what this means is that Mars, like I said, is the planet of action, right? It's the planet of taking initiative and Pluto is transformation. So if we start something new and we decide to commit to a way of doing things or, you know, we structure how we do things a little bit better, we might need to change up, transform our way of working, our way of approaching something, right? Because Pluto brings transformation. And now it's bringing transformation to Mars, to action, to initiative. So we might need to change up our approach to things. So that's there as well. And I think these are the most important highlights for the new moon. So on Tuesday, on the same day, it goes retrograde. And Neptune is the planet of spirituality. But Neptune is also the planet that can bring a lot of confusion right it can bring a lot of confusion and when neptune is direct which it has been since december of 2021 we actively work on growing right spiritually on evolving as souls and that at times can be confusing and when neptune is direct the confusion is more right so when neptune goes retrograde the confusion eases off and this is extremely important right now because like i said right we've been trying to figure things out we've been a little confused and with neptune going retrograde a few hours before this new moon by the time we have that new moon right the confusion um can be much less can be much less and since Mars is sextiling Saturn as well, that energy of structured action, of committing to something, a way of doing things, a way of moving forward, and then the confusion going away, and then this new energy of starting something with Jupiter in contact with it. So this is a point where there's a lot of energy to start something that you might have been wondering about or thinking about. So it's that energy. And since it's a new moon, right, this is the beginning of this energy. We will work on it for the whole month. So this is that. I would say consider it the beginning of the new, right? It's the beginning point of the new. And on Tuesday, right, the moon is going to be in Cancer and it's going to be here, I believe, till Thursday Pacific time, right, till Thursday. Let's just see it actually. So yeah, Thursday, 7 p.m. or so, the moon enters the sign of Leo. Most of the world, actually, some places this might be Friday morning that the moon changes signs. So from Tuesday to Thursday, right, when the moon is in Cancer, there's a lot of energy about taking care of ourselves and nourishing ourselves and going within. So focusing on that might be a good thing. Now on Thursdays, the moon changes signs with the moon in Leo. Leo is 
all about following our heart right it's a very fun loving energy as well it's about um creative things as well leo is a very creative energy so with the moon in leo right a lot of focus comes down to following our heart doing what makes us happy right having fun a little bit maybe um indulging in your hobbies or indulging in like something like sports so that sort of thing with the moon in leo and the moon's going to be here for two and a half days up till saturday i believe right or even sunday i will check that but towards the weekend it's going to change signs and the moon in leo although it has this really um fun loving energy to it right about following your heart being creative indulging in sports and hobbies and that sort of thing the moon in leo does feel a little stressed right it is going to oppose saturn and it does square uranus so up until um this is more i believe friday into saturday when the moon will square uranus and oppose saturn we might feel slightly stressed and with uranus we can feel slightly over the edge you know like really like restless so just keep that in mind and the moon moves very fast that if you're feeling stressed if you're feeling a little restless it's going to last for about a couple of hours right at most so i just thought i'd mention that and the next highlight is something that we've already spoken about and this happens on friday yes it happens on friday pacific time in the evening so some places this might be saturday and what's happening here is that um pluto and mars are squaring and we spoke about this right the change in uh, how we do things a transformation to how we take action but this is a square right so we might be a little reluctant we might be a little reluctant or hesitant to change our way of doing things right maybe for example maybe you've been working on a certain project for for a few months or something and it's working but it's not really working right and with this mars saturn you say okay you know what this there's this new thing i wanted to start and this new way of doing things connected to this project that i wanted to start and i've kind of committed to it with the mars saturn on monday but i'm feeling that the change is uh, is challenging right i need to change up these things that i need to do connected to this project and it's feeling challenging so it's something like that it's not negative right but it will require us to step out of our comfort zone but any change right any change always requires us to step out of that comfort zone so this is peaking on friday this energy but we'll start from the beginning of the week and let me see if there's anything else that i've left out okay yeah so we have a couple more things this week and this happens on saturday pacific time right and what's happening here is that mercury is going to square neptune right it's going to square neptune and then it's going to trine saturn so it squares neptune and trine saturn and this is saturday saturday pacific time some places this might be sunday and mercury is our logical mind right it's our mind it's our thinking and neptune like i said can bring confusion so on saturday or sunday depending on your location we might feel slightly confused for a few moments like the moon mercury also moves pretty fast not as fast as the moon but pretty fast so when it squares neptune right we might feel a certain confusion but let this energy pass let it pass because okay let's see this actually let's see it okay so this is about 1:32 pm pacific time saturday so what's happening here is mercury is in an exact square with neptune so this is when that confusion can peak right or see neptune is confusion yes but neptune can also bring this feeling of feeling dull right not dull like but like you know feeling a little gloomy and when it contacts a logical mind we might feel that way so just let this energy pass if you're doubting yourself if you're confused again right 
did I make the right choice? Did I start this thing and was it the right thing to start? Then don't doubt yourself, right? Wait, wait, wait. This energy will pass, okay? So, and it's 2 p.m. when it peaks, but there's a build-up. So we might start feeling it a few hours before. And let's see. Then by 25, okay, by like 4.35, Mercury moves on and it trines Saturn, right? Positive. Saturn, like I said, brings decisions and commitments and it's the planet of reality. It's very different from Neptune. Neptune is very dreamy. It's the other world. But Saturn is the reality. And now Saturn is contacting Mercury in a positive way. So that confusion, if there was any... I would say it should have eased off by now, right? It should have eased off by now. And with Saturn, that decision, that clarity of uh, how to move forward, right? That that will get more uh, clear, more clear. So that's Saturday. And on Saturday, the moon is in Leo. And this is okay. And at, the, at this time, the moon is opposing Saturn, right? And moon Saturn energies can feel challenging right can feel challenging but sometimes what happens is and i've noticed this in myself as well when the moon contacts saturn right we do something very seriously saturn is very serious so maybe this is that point right with a positive aspect to mercury in opposition to saturn something serious is happening right maybe you're deciding something seriously maybe you're making your to-do list right serious so this is that moment and it's not always negative moon saturn i've seen it can really help um bring clarity it will require us to work on something and do that but it can be a moment of clarity so that's saturday pacific time and then i'm gonna move up the charge to sunday right Okay, that didn't move. There we go. By Sunday, the moon is in Virgo, right? Virgo is different from Leo in many ways. Virgo energy is about getting organized, getting planned, structuring things. Um, structuring things in a way of planning them, right? It's, it's a very uh, organized sort of energy, Virgo. So... What this means to me is when the moon is in Virgo by Sunday Pacific time, we'll maybe start planning a little bit more, right? How to do things. We'll maybe focus more on the mundane tasks, right? Maybe you get to your uh, to-do list. Maybe you're uh, prepping for the week ahead. That's Virgo, right? Getting to the mundane tasks, planning, organizing, making your to-do list, right? So that's the energy on Sunday. Of course, that's the energy of the moon in a certain way that does impact us. But right now, if you look at the chart, let's let's look at the chart. Where's the energy? Aries, starting things. Where was the new moon? Cancer, starting things. Right, a lot about starting things. And with Aries, it's about going after it and making it happen, right? No holding back. Aries energy does not hold back. So that's there. And the last thing I want to talk about is that we have Uranus in the North Node so close. We are feeling this, right? And what is this that we are feeling? Let's talk about that. North Node is the future. It represents the future. It's also known as Rahu, right? It's known as Rahu as well. And the North Node is a lot like Jupiter in the sense that it magnifies anything. It will take something and just magnify it. And what is it magnifying right now? It's magnifying Uranus. What is Uranus? Sudden change, right? Awakenings. Um, Uranus is insights, epiphanies, downloads, ideas. All that is Uranus. So it's magnifying that. And what does that mean? That means that we can be flooded with ideas. We can be flooded with insights, epiphanies, downloads. And we can be changing. Uranus is changed, right? And we can be awakening. Uranus is awakening your consciousness. So these themes are magnified. And in they are in, okay, before I talk about that, and they will meet up in July, July 31st, right? So we are building to their conjunction and they're really close right now. And these two don't meet up very often. The last time they met up was 2007. So 15 years ago. So, 
and they're close, right? It's less than 5 degrees. Uranus is at 17, North Node is 20, 21, 4 degree difference, right? Almost. And we're feeling the buildup of this change that might come our way in July. We are feeling the buildup of all the insight, uh, insights, ideas, epiphanies that we might be receiving, right? And in the sign of Taurus, right? What is Taurus? Taurus is about safety. Taurus is about security. Taurus is about raw materials. Taurus is also about currency and economy and it's to do with our values, it's to do with our self-worth, it's to do with our material possessions and finances and the North Node in Taurus is highlighting these themes and Uranus is Taurus in Taurus is slowly changing up these themes. Uranus spends seven years in a sign so it's not an overnight change it's going to take seven years but with the north node there and uranus there taurus is highlighted less than last month right because last month we had a lot of energy in taurus venus was there mercury was there north node the sun was there in the month of may so there was a lot of taurus last month not as much as last month but it's still highlighted and if you watch me regularly then you know that the energy has been really concentrated right for the past few months capricorn aquarius then pisces right in the month of march and april we had a lot of pisces and what is pisces it's the end it's the end of the zodiac it's the closing out of the past so march into april we did a lot of closing out all the way up until may i would say right because that's when that lunar eclipse was there may 15th and it really closed things out in a big way and now there's Aries and last last uh, month there was Aries Taurus right there was Aries Taurus a lot of energy in these two and now if you see there is a lot of energy in Aries but Taurus has kind of um, you know the energy has moved on from that into Gemini now we have two energies in Gemini but if you look at the chart now Mars is finishing up in Aries, right? It's finishing up. It's going to enter Taurus, I believe, on July 5th. Yeah, around then. Mercury is also going to enter the sign of Cancer in a few days' time. So now is when the energy is slowly moving apart. And when the energies are together, as they have been, it feels intense, right? It feels intense because even in our personal charts, right, the planets are transiting one or two houses so my chart disappeared anyway um i was almost done so that's the week in a nutshell and i would say that this is an important week right this is a week where with neptune going retrograde the new moon in cancer mars making a positive aspect with saturn and squaring pluto which is considered challenging we might really start to see things clearly right that confusion that we might have been feeling for the past um, six weeks or so must might be getting easier by now and there's tremendous amounts of energy to go after what you want and start things but whatever you start right make sure it makes you comfortable make sure it it's in your comfort zone in a way right of course when we start something we're not always comfortable but you know maybe internally you need to feel like okay you know what yeah i feel good about this so that sort of thing so i hope you enjoyed this video and i will make a new moon video as well so you can check that out if you like and i will see you next week bye